differently able to differently. Rotary Sunshine Rally is all about bringing sunshine to the lives of children with disabilities. This annual event happened on the 4th of March, the first of its kind after a long break due to COVID-19. Let's take a look. Rotary has been at the forefront in community development over the years. In Rotary, we have uh, seven focus areas where we target our resources, our time and resources into its um, basic, basic education and literacy, its water and sanitation and hygiene, um, uh, disease uh, treatment and um, you know, prevention, uh, its mother and child health, peace and uh, conflict uh, prevention and resolution, as well as environment. We are um, mostly uh, going into impoverished communities where um, basic requirements are much less or absent. In Rotary, if we go to schools, we go to schools whose parents are in a very poverty-stricken areas or drought affected, it can be anything, or internally displaced. And we always try to support and provide assistance as needed. We are comprised over 3,600 Rotarians in over 136 clubs. We're here to provide service to our communities. Part of that service is to give a day out of fun for those less abled. Today we have close to 7,000 children from schools all over Nairobi and the other counties coming together for a day of fun. Some of them do not have the opportunity to leave their schools at all for the entire year. And this is really a great opportunity, an opportunity that we have done for 41 years. This is an event that was organized by Rotary uh, January is a fun day and is targeting children with disability in the larger Nairobi metropolitan. Uh, we have converged children with disability in the five counties that make up uh, Nairobi metropolitan. That's Muranga, Kiambu, Kajado, Machakos and Nairobi. So at least we find that it's an important day for them to have Come and just have fun. Rotary Sunshine Rally is one of the projects they undertake. Sunshine Rally is one of the Rotary programs we have. It started in 1979. It was actually started by the Manu Chandaria Foundation, courtesy of Dr. Manu Chandaria, who is a Rotarian at the Rotary Club of Nairobi, the oldest club. Uh, it's actually 92 years now. So what happened, he had a brother who had a hearing impairment. And uh, his brother is the one who introduced him to Rotary. Then when, after his brother passed on, he needed to do something to just remember his brother, late brother. And he came up with this event. Those who have attended the rally before have fond memories. So today I'm coming here as a parent, as a Rotarian also. And um, I'm also Miss United Nations, Miss Africa and Queen of Africa. So all of those things are under the docket of what I champion for passionately, which is disability. And um, being a Rotarian, this is the, a very personal project because I've participated in it over many years, helped out in organizing and uh, raising awareness about Sunshine Rally and persons with disabilities. So it's a very happy home place for me. This is um, a beautiful Sunshine Rally that uh, I used to attend when I was a kid, Ethica Primary School for the Blind. And we used to look forward to coming to the show, when the show would go in December. And they would bring these big Akamba Scania buses, if you remember them. And uh, then the teacher on duty would decide which uh, pupils would come to Jamhuri Park. And sometimes some of us would be told not to come because the numbers were limited because it's not the whole school that would go. And then una chekelewa na wengine, umemwaga unga. We used to love it because in the evening, after being you know, here, this is the first time where I would uh, go, uh, join the, the train, eh? this train, Kariyamoshi, as we call it, uh, riding on horses, 
uh, we would see motorbike show, magicians, the big, uh, what do you call them? This phantom, people walking on sticks, uh, those things, and then, and then safari, safari, safari rally. They would do, you know, gyms, you know, those gymnastics for us. And it was nice, it was really nice because uh, for children with special needs or children with disabilities, they don't usually get these opportunities. I honestly believe that uh, the Sunshine Rally should remain a purview of the Rotary Clubs. I don't think it should be owned by government. It will be messed up. I'm being honest. Let the Rotarians, let it be voluntary, as it was started by Manu Chandaria. Uh, and I'm happy now there's a lot of local content. The first time I attended Sunshine Valley was back in 2013. Uh, an experience being a Rotaractor. Back then I wasn't really uh, on this other side of uh, the kids uh, who are specially abled. Uh, the, uh, in this experience, for me, uh, it has been a, quite a, a big experience. In most of the times I've come here as a volunteer to help the kids. Each, uh, each year we would come, uh, ferry the kids from the school uh, to, to the grounds, spend the whole day with them, serve them. But being on the other side now, it's quite an experience. I never thought at one point I would uh, get to this other side uh, because at, uh, for all my life I never thought I would ever be disabled. And when I was uh, amputated my leg, for me it was hard because each time coming to Sunshine Rally, I really wanted to come and help, to assist the kids with special needs. And now imagining I can't do much of the ferrying, I can't take care of much of the kids. But uh, as the experience went on, uh, having been uh, amputated, I was able to uh, gather a lot of courage. And I experienced that when it comes to help, you don't really need to help in terms of caring. You can do other things, you can assist by organizing, you can assist by delegating, you can assist by asking other people to help. And for me, that's uh, quite, of, uh, it's a challenge, but also, also I would call it something I would be proud of as a Rotaractor. Jonte narrates briefly how he got his disability. I didn't have any issues. Actually what happened, uh, I would get a swelling in my knee for some time. And each time I would go visit the hospital, I would either be told uh, it's a hematoma, that is an internal bleeding, and I, the, the doctors would say there is nothing to worry about. And until one point I felt it, this swelling is too much. It wasn't painful, it was just a swelling. So I thought maybe why not uh, seek an advice from somebody who knows more. So I sought help from an orthopedic surgeon who advised for an incision where we can remove the hematoma. But only when we did the first surgery, it was when we discovered there was a tumor. And uh, the tumor was removed, but we never thought it was something huge. After like four weeks, I was called back to the hospital only to discover I had synovial sarcoma, which is the cancer of the smooth muscles, and I had to lose my leg. It was a stage three. Um, from then, I have gone through, that was last year, but one, 2021, around August. I went for chemos. Uh, now I'm on remission a year later. And it feels nice to be on the other side. As much as it would look like a disgrace, it's also a blessing. Over the years, the number of children has been increasing, making the event bigger and better. The first event had about 300 kids in 1979. The following year, his club took up the project as a club project, as opposed to being a personal project. The same year, Rotary was turning 75 years, Rotary International. And the same year, UN uh, uh, made it uh, the UN year of the handicapped. That was in 1980. So from 1980 onwards, Rotary clubs now, apart from Rotary Club of Nairobi, other clubs came together and just to have this event. Bring in a few kids. Uh, I don't think they had more than 3,000 kids uh, up until maybe 2014 there. So they used to bring in a few kids coming from uh, say Machakos, others from Kirinyaga, uh, mostly within Nairobi and Thika environs. Entertain them, feed them and take them back. 
But so far, the last, uh, say, five, six years, we've increased the numbers. I remember we had 2,400, say, about in 2014, then the numbers started going up. 2,800, before you know it, we've hit 3,457. The last event we had before this one, we had uh, 6,123 kids. Uh, over the years, what we've seen is an increase in numbers and also people willing to also support. But also parents, for me, what it means more numbers is more parents like me are able to embrace their children and bring them out. And for the students, you know when they're always in their own space, there is that limited, this is the life that I know. But you see, when you come out and you see there are other disabilities, there are other children like me, you, they get encouraged. Their self-esteem also goes up. Because outside in the outside world, there are so many challenges that limit. And those limitations are the ones that make them feel lesser human beings. They're the ones that feel that, that they feel that I cannot achieve what others are achieving. But I'm sure, like when we had the senator here today, and uh, another visually impaired person sees her and they're like, actually, I can do this, you know? So it is an inspiration for them and a safe space at the same time. And what about fun? How many times do you see persons with disabilities? Have you seen even a playing field for persons with disability? It's not there. So it's that one time that they get to fully be themselves and also be embraced for who they are 100%. And it brings joy to a lot of us. There are plans to have the events in other areas so as to reach a wider audience. So basically you can see the numbers are there and uh, more reason why we had to devolve the event. The fact that we had so many kids in 2019 and the arena was full, as you can see it is full today. We decided to devolve, that's why we had a sunshine rally in Kisi last week. We had about uh, 500 kids. Today we have about again around 6,500 kids on site. Next week in Kirinyaga we're going to have 2,000 kids. In cost, they are still planning in May. I don't know how many kids they are going to plan. Going forward, I'll be the district governor in 1st July 2023. And it's my intention to take this effort further, to take it to South Sudan, to have an event there, to have an event in Ethiopia, to have more regional events for the Sunshine Rally in Kenya, and also to encourage our colleagues in Uganda and in Tanzania where we have Rotarians to take it up because I think this is an event that is none like none other. I don't think there's an event like this in Africa. We should take care of our children not only in school but in terms of the leisure activities, the fun activities they need to grow into whole persons. Let's take a break. We'll return with more on Sunshine Rally. Differently abled, differently. Differently abled, differently. Welcome back, and this is Able Differently. Let's get to hear more about the Sunshine Rally and its impact. Rotary Sunshine Rally is about fun. However, the organizers use this opportunity to push for policies. Our plan as Rotary is to do more than have a fun event with the children. We're going to look at supporting them within their schools. We are looking at the water and sanitation, the ablution blocks within these schools and we're going to try and target to be able to build appropriate ablution facilities, provision of water for the kids. As we said, education on its own is not enough. You need to have the right environment to do so. And Rotary is really committed to do that, and it will be my uh, single endeavor to try and take it further than these rallies that you're seeing today. And as to the how fun, as a council, we are partnering with Rota so that now all the kids who are here, they are registered as persons with disability. So we, they did the mobilization, we have come with all the resources, the medics from Bagadi Hospital, and as my officer from the National Council. So the doctors are assessing them, and as we are registered them. So that by the time they leave, after the fund, yeah, 
They are also registered as a person with disability. During the 41st Sanction Rally, Persons with Disabilities had an opportunity to register with the National Council for Persons with Disabilities. I'm also happy because the National Council for Persons with Disabilities uh, is now doing mass registration. Uh, even myself, I'm yet to take my second card, second generation card. So I think it's good for kids to be registered and Rotary has done very well to collaborate with the NCPWD and we hope that more people are going to be in that new database. This is one of our, our outreach program. Uh, for a person who's able to be registered, has to go to hospital, there's a fee they pay for them to be registered. But when you have an outreach program like today, they're exempted from paying the medical fee at the hospital and also other charges that they may have incurred, like in terms of transport and the like. Like Rotary made uh, that arrangement, they fed them here, so at least when it comes to exempt expenses related to registration, they are not uh, incurring them. So it's, it's sort of free for them, and we need all of them, besides having fun, yeah, to get registered as personal disability. Mr. Dewafula affirms on the importance of being registered. For us to know you as a personal disability, you must be registered. So many people are purporting to be personal disability. The only way uh, for you to know that this person is a personal disability is through registration. And registration is a tedious process that they have to go through uh, medical assessment, then the doctor recommend to us and we register them. So we need everybody to be registered. Currently, the council is rolling out new cards to curb the illegalities. We, my, we are doing what we call migration from old generation card to the new generation card. And we, we had the challenges with the, the old card because people were faking it. Yeah? So the new, what we have done with the new card, we have put up some security features, uh, four of them. But the most important one is QR code. Yeah? With the QR code, if you, maybe even, even your phone, if it's enabled, yeah? you can confirm that this person indeed is registered. So, so that to ensure that people have the right card. In a month, we should be ready to have everybody. Like for those who are here, we are telling them in a month's time, they will be getting their cards. Also, there was a call to make medical cover free and accessible. We are here to support the National Council of Persons with Disability in their registration exercise, which is ongoing, plus uh, the medical assessment and also to push for the Disability Act. We would like Parliament to pass it so that a lot of issues are revolving around healthcare, education and employment opportunities for persons with disabilities are looked at. Healthcare, we are looking at both the government and private sector. Government should make NHIF free for persons with disability. If you have been registered and you have a disability card, ideally NHIF should be just free. My son is now turning 13 and I can tell you one of the greatest challenges we have as parents on the autism spectrum and the neurodiverse community on top of the complexities and all the needs that we have. Uh, as early as two months ago, I have a medical cover but they still refuse to cover my children. Like, I, I'm in hospital and they say, no, we cannot cover you. And you can imagine, I was like, that money I paid, I would have used it to pay here. So you can imagine that other parent who cannot accept. What Rotary is saying is what is already anchored in the law. If you read the Children Act of 2022, there's a provision that said that all children with disability are supposed to access free medical care and also free education. So at least Rotary say what's already in the law. And of course we need now to operationalize that particular act in the Children Act. Of course as a council, we are delighted to have such kind of provision for our children with disability. So UHC is very important. And uh, as a board director, I can tell you now that we have a fund for, that's specifically focused on autism and neurodevelopmental disabilities, that is what we are trying to structure on how best we can be able to serve and assist parents who have neurodiverse uh, children. Because you find they need diapers, they need medication, we need therapy, and access to all this and also seeing specialized doctors is not easy. So we are hoping to 
lobby for the government to also uh, allocate more funds because what is currently there cannot even scratch the surface. But it is a good start and we appreciate. It has been a long journey for us to get here. So we appreciate that this far at least there is something. It's still being uh, worked on, the program, and we hope to roll it out by end of year. And we're looking forward to see at least a uh, better life. Children are the future and therefore they need to have them get proper upbringing. Rotary in, th in our district has a number of uh, projects that we are supporting with. And one of the most important for me after visiting 138 clubs individually this year is our target beneficiaries must be school children. If we cultivate school children at that level, any school children, I'm not naming types and so on, then we will assure Africa with the right leaders and the right type of you know, uh, support. The idea behind Sunshine Rally is just to create awareness about persons with disability. Also to remind uh, people who have uh, family, friends with disabilities that they should not hide them. As per African culture, someone with disability is perceived as a curse. So for us, we are trying to just let them know that they are not a curse. We also want to show these persons with disability, mainly the children, to feel loved, to come out in the sun, to just uh, interact with them, because it builds their confidence when they are interacting with public. A lot of people don't take their children out, the ones who have disabilities. But we've seen what Sunshine Rally has done. We've had kids who have ended up being um, actually leading from now when they started coming when they were in primary then high school and you can see they actually become leaders because of the confidence they get caregivers were also not left behind as they are part and parcel of the children's lives it's important and as you will see here that the caregivers are part and parcel of this celebration that we're having today they're here together with their children so we ensure that we cover everybody involved in that uh, environment. I would say that we are covering over 10,000 this year, 10,000 children and caregivers, and our, our intention is to increase that progressively over the years to 15 and 20, but more importantly, more than a single event, to now touch the lives of the children sustainably a provision of really the essential things that they need around their education, which is the, the water and the sanitation, access to health. And like today we have the uh, persons uh, with disability team registering them because that will allow them to play a fuller role in society. So we would want to really work on this particular aspects going forward. Honorable Mwawura, who was in attendance, took the chance to talk about tax exemption. I've already talked to the Kenya Revenue Authority about uh, tax exemption. The disability tax exemption is a legal provision. It should not be tampered with, especially for pay as you earn. And that already, I was in talks um, on Tuesday uh, and Thursday with KRA, and we are following through to make sure that all of the people with disabilities who are now exempted will remain to be exempted. Of course, there is agency in the fact that the government is losing over 600 billion through exemptions, but for people with disabilities, the last time I did uh, an assessment, can you imagine disabled people who are employed in Kenya by government and who are being exempted are less than 10,000. Our numbers are very, very low. Uh, in secondary school, the last time I checked, according to 2016 uh, data, I hope there is newer data, there are only 25,000 students in high school and 90,000 in primary school and very few at the university, about 500. So we, we have to do something because many children with disabilities do not make it to the highest level of, of, of learning. For all this to be successful, implementation is key. Africa at this mom moment in time is suffering because its labor force, force which is 65 to 70 percent are unemployed. Our, our target must be at the use 
we have to think about our youth. We have to build their capacity. We have to make sure that we bring them into the socio-economic platform so that they contribute. We have a lot of very good policies in our country, but the challenge is implementation. Because if you look at the children policy, it clearly says children with disabilities should access free medical services. But if you go on ground, is it actually happening? No, it's not. So if we would be able to actually keep those who are supposed to be implementing accountable. And that's one of the things that I am hoping the National Council can be given the powers and the independence as a body on its own to be able to do the checks and balances. Because if we just say policies and no one is actually checking, then we're just, just talking. I have so much confidence in the youth. What we saw today at the Sunshine Rally is something to tell us how the young are running around and trying to support. Some are carrying kids, some are really supporting, some are feeding the kids, some are doing what is really needed. And that is heartwarming. We Africans, we have to dirt our hands. We have to start working hard. We have to be there to build up our continent. But also, it's not just an academic pursuit. I think it's a question of independent living, and that's very important. However, every child deserves happiness, and I'm very grateful that the Rotary Clubs uh, are doing this uh, here and in Kirinyaga uh, to really make the day shine, the sun shine, for children with disabilities. Let's take a look at the UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. Article 25 of the UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities states that state parties shall, Part B, provide those health services needed by persons with disabilities, specifically because of their disabilities, including early identification and intervention as appropriate and services designed to minimize and prevent further disabilities, including among children and older persons. And here is the tip for the day. When it comes to employment, we need government to create more employment opportunities for persons with disability, especially in the ICT space. There's a lot they can do. We know that. We see our own Jonte. As much as he, he lost his leg, he's now doing a lot of ICT work. And those are the things we want to push for as we do this event. Other than that, show the children love and just make them feel like they're okay. I'm afraid this is where we end for today, but be sure to join us every other Saturday when time and space allows. My name is Jane Theory. Goodbye. We are here and we are strong. Let's be counted as we move on. Make a difference, change lives. As we tell our different stories, we are capable, beautiful, we are born to do great things. We're unstoppable, incredible, cause we're differently abled, differently.